Hello and welcome back to our Impact Your Life channel and our episode seven in our pregnancy and postpartum series. And today we're gonna to be talking about how to care for, carry, lift, play with good positions for working with toddlers, whether they're your kids, whether you're work uh, as a daycare provider, or maybe it's just you have family members with lots of children. You may be struggling with how to Mama, how lift them. It? Great job and carry them in a way that doesn't really aggravate you whether it be that you're postpartum um, Had a recent c-section or vaginal birth or that you are Anywhere in your pregnancy and just struggling with those issues. So I'm Christy Amundsen I am a physical therapist with impact physical medicine and I am 26 Mommy, weeks Mommy, pregnant this week big girl They are big girl pants and I'm here with my two toddlers this is Nalia, she is um, almost two and a half. And this is Aurora, also known as Rory. She's three and a half. And we have lots of fun, but I do struggle with some pelvic pain, back pain, upper back pain, lower back pain issues in my pregnancy. And I wanna just share with you some of the things that I've learned both in my profession, as well as just on my own at home with these kiddos, anything that can make your lives easier. So let's go. Okay, so if you have toddlers or work with toddlers, you probably are spending a lot of time on the floor. So you wanna avoid sitting in a turned out, like a crisscross applesauce position or a wider straddle. No, you're doing my book, Daddy. That's okay, she can do the book. You wanna instead sit in a position where maybe you curl your legs to the side and lean on a table or lean on your arm. You could do this both directions. You also wanna to try to avoid playing on the floor a lot as opposed to um, using an elevated surface like a coffee table this allows your body to stay a little more upright your back doesn't have to work as hard as if you are um, leaning forward using your arms playing down here your back has to work harder if you're diapering i recommend that you diaper on an elevated surface and do more of like a kneeling position where you're diapering on the couch or on a chair or on a um, changing table where you're standing up if you are already on the floor, the best, one of the, one of a really good ways to uh, position is if you're someone who is comfortable kneeling like this, I would not recommend doing this even if it is comfortable for you right now because the hormones in your body uh, relax your ligaments and tissues to a point where it can stress your joints, both your knees and your ankles. So instead of this, you're just gonna prop like a, a blanket underneath your ankles to support your ankles. And then you would grab a pillow, small pillow, either from your bed or a throw pillow like this, and put it on top of your legs and under your seat. So that helps take the pressure off of your knees so you're not hyperflexing your knees. This is a really nice position to um, diaper in on the floor. If you don't have the opportunity to grab all the props, you can also um, diaper in a position where you're kind of half, in like a half straddle, where one leg is straight and one leg is bent. If, as long as this isn't painful for you. So we're also going to go over some lifting and carrying um, techniques that, that I have learned both as a mom and as a physical therapist. So let's do that next. Okay, so another idea too when you're sitting is by putting a pillow either from the couch or from your bed or if you have one of these handy things against the chair that you can lean against for some back support. Generally, if you're using that and you can um, stick your legs under the coffee table there that you're playing, that, that's another good option for sitting as well. When you're getting up and down from the floor, I would recommend using a, instead of kind of the typical trying to get up with one leg like this and pushing up, that does put a little asymmetrical pull on your pelvis and hips and back. So I would recommend trying to use either a chair or the side of the couch to either put your elbows down or your hands down and you'll lean forward on the couch or the chair or the surface and then you're going to push up with your butt up in the air and then kind of walk your feet together in smaller steps to stand up and then you would just reverse it to sit or to get back down so you would walk your hands put your hands down or elbows down and walk your feet away and then lower yourself down on your knees like that to get up and down 
So for lifting, lifting can be a little bit diff uh, difficult from the floor because a lot of the general lifting recommendations that we make in terms of taking a really wide base of support are not typically as, as desirable when you have um, an unstable pelvis. So what you're gonna try to do is find a happy medium. So you're going to put your feet about hip width apart or maybe a little bit wider. You'll have to experiment with it. You want to try not to turn your feet out really wide like this. So try to keep them relatively straight. They can be a slight bit turned out, but not much. And then you're going to bend your knees and you want your butt to go back as you um, reach down so that you keep a relatively straight back, but so you do, you're not lifting and bending forward like this. Bye, bye honey. Going to work. Oh, you're going to work? Okay, bye, have a good day. So you wanna try to um, evenly have your butt go back as your arms go forward and reach the child, as opposed to bending um, straight forward with your back like this and your hips. Hey, Aurora, can you come here for a second? So if you're picking up a child, can you sit on the floor for me with your bag? Oh, thank you. So if you were to pick up from the floor, again, it would look more like this. You would put your feet a little bit wider, point your toes straight, butt goes back, arms go forward, and then you would lift from the floor up. <laughs> Was that fun? And then same thing um, to reverse it. Oops, let's not play with that. When we reverse it, you would go back down, again, bending your knees, trying not to bend your back down like this. If your child is older, like Aurora, and come on over here, Aurora, and is able to climb up on a surface for you to not lift from the floor, that is the most desirable. So she can climb up on this chair, even if they're not quite old enough to climb up independently, if you can assist them and just monitor them for safety on the chair, that's usually the best that's a lot better than trying to pick them up from the floor. And then you would go from here, again, bend your knees a little bit and lift. So when I carry the girls, I try to put her up as high as I can. So it's kind of under your bra line, but above your belly. This gets them as close to your body as possible. And I really try to wrap my hands around so that she's kind of symmetrical into me. It's really tempting to kind of shift your hips forward and lean back like this. So they're leaning back, leaning on you. Um, but you want to try to avoid doing that so that, because um, it puts a lot of pressure on your back. Bye. <laughs> Bye. So if holding in the front doesn't work for you for whatever reason, you can also hold on the side. So can you climb up here for me, Aurora, please? So again, you would pick them up, bend, their, bend your knees, pick them up, <laughs> And then on either side, again, but you'd want to hold them higher up. You're not, they're not like sitting on your hip where you're resting out to the side like this. Then you can keep a little bit more equal weight bearing. And then you can kind of switch sides. Hold on, right? Can, can we show them this? Thank you. Okay, a couple other tips that I've learned. Their bedtime routine, I typically hold them and kind of rock them side to side. We sing a song before bed and um, laying them down in their crib or their bed. And I have, in the second half of my pregnancy, struggled with that a little bit because it can last up to five or 10 minutes. So I've, I've started to kind of rest their bottoms on the crib as I kind of rock side to side. Um, that way I'm not having to lift and carry them the entire time, which has worked really well. I also, anytime I'm at, at a place or um, in my house or anywhere that um, has an elevated surface, such as my kitchen countertop, I will often rest their bottoms on the countertop as I'm kind of um, holding them in close to me. So they're getting the feeling that I'm holding them, but I'm actually not having to, you know, lift and carry their, their weight in its, in its entirety. The other thing that um, has worked really well for us is we have used their high chair or their booster seats at the table quite a lot for when they play whether that means building blocks or coloring or if we're playing a, uh, like a family game they will actually will just bring a kitchen chair up to close to the high chair or the booster seat and they will climb in themselves with us standing there for safety and then they can play independently there or if i wanted to play with them i sit i get to sit at the kitchen table which i don't have to lower all the way down to the floor and it's gotten much easier so i hope that some of these tips were helpful for you and 
Um, if anything was helpful in this video, if you can give it a thumbs up, we will be back next week and we hope you have a nice week. See you later. Say bye-bye.